Good evening and welcome to Southern Hills this evening. We do want to extend a special welcome to all of our guests and visitors tonight. I hope at some point today you've had a chance to pick up one of our bulletins and look at it. There's plenty of information about Southern Hills and things that are going on um, here at our congregation, but just a few announcements we'd like to make. Uh, Joe Burns did have knee replacement surgery last week, and Joe Burns is actually here tonight. He was here this morning, so it's good to see Joe out uh, recovering from knee, knee replacement surgery. Also, Donovan Holt did have a biopsy done last week. I um, want to remember Joan Mead. This is Mike Mead's mother. Uh, she'll be having some tests run this week, coming up week. Uh, so we want to remember her in our prayers and the Meads in our prayers as she's going through uh, the tests. Also, there's lots of activities going on here at Southern Hills this coming up week. Tuesday, uh, Disaster Relief will be packing food boxes at 10 a.m. at their location in Nashville. The Wednesday Ladies Bible Class will meet at 10 a.m. Uh, Thursday evening will be the Ladies Gala. Then Friday, we have Breakfast with Dan here at the back in the Fellowship Hall. If you have not signed up for that, if you would sign up back in the foyer. And then Saturday, we have our Share Group Holiday Party at 10.30 in the morning, and then our Shrimp Group Holiday Party at 6.30, both Saturday evening. Uh, but those are the announcements that I have for this evening. If you would bow with me in prayer as we begin. Father in heaven, we are thankful for your word. We are thankful for your son and his willingness to come and die on the cross for our sins so that we can have a home with you in heaven one day. Father, we are thankful for all of the activities and things that we have going on here at Southern Hills. We pray that everything that we do and everything that we say bring, brings glory to your name. Father, we pray that you be with each one of us as we enter this period of singing. In Jesus' name, amen. Good evening. First song will be As the Deer. As the song is not in the book. Hopefully some of you know this. I want to be where you are.
number 244, if you're using our songbook. 244, we'll sing the first, second, and third verses. Time is moving, Scripture and opening prayer will sing, Come to the Table. This is also not in the book. First scripture reading tonight will be coming from Philippians chapter 4, verses 8 through 9. Again, that is Philippians chapter 4, verses 8 through 9. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. 
Please bow as we go to God in prayer. Dear God, we thank you for this night you've given us to come together as one body and worship with one another. We ask that you focus our minds on the words and the music and help us draw closer to you and learn more about you tonight. Please help us focus as we go into the lesson and sing more about you. Thank you especially for Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. Uh, we have an opportunity to spend the rest of eternity with you. Please help us as we know we frequently fall short of the target and please forgive us of our sins as we make them on a daily basis. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. For our visitors in the audience, the first uh, Sunday night of the month, we do a singing worship. So if we do have any visitors tonight and you're wondering why another song leader is getting up, that's why. Uh, our next song this evening will be number 844, Be Still and Know. Sing out and give me a hand here as we uh, learn a new song. Now to one that we'll sing a couple times more in the future. It's one I really like. In case you didn't recognize the words, you might want to go and pick up your Bible and find that one. Our next song this evening will be number 301 if you're using the book, and this is one that I feel like we all do know. If you would, please stand with me as we sing this song.
right, our next song this evening. You can please be seated. <laughs> Number 790, if you're using our book, In Vain and High and Holy Lays, 790. Continue our reading from Philippians chapter 4, starting in verse 10 through 15. Philippians 4, verses 10 through 15. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again. Though you surely did not care, though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Not, not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be a base, and I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Nevertheless, you have done well that you shared in my distress. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving but you only. Our next song tonight will be number 312. They try my
one of my favorite songs, and I think I've let it here once before, but Philip told me it was 2019, so it might feel a little bit new to some of you. There are two verses, and we'll sing both of them. I am. Mercy is more. I think I led this on the singing night a couple of months ago, and I'd like to lead it again tonight.
before our devotional tonight, let's stand and sing number 400, Living by Faith. I care not to get what the mother may bring, shadow or sunshine. As many of you know, the, this afternoon we spent uh, with the youth group uh, providing free child care. And I was told that I might be a little crazy for doing that. I was told that they really appreciated us doing that and, and all of those things. But we really enjoyed uh, providing the child care for, I guess, the KFC, the Lambs of Light, all of those children. But as I watched them play... I thought, I, you know, just watched them play, and there was not a worry and not a concern about what was going to happen next, what we were going to eat for lunch, what, was going to ha- what we were going to have to drink, and, you know, what movie, and different things like that. They were not worried about the slightest thing at all. And as I watched them play and kind of oversaw them a little bit, I thought about Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18, verses 3 and 4, what Jesus, what, what Jesus says is, Unless you become like a child, you will, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. And so I watched them, you know, as I was watching, I was thinking about that. And I thought about, you know, what, is, what does that mean? How could we become like a little child. And then I thought more about how they don't worry about anything. They don't, they're not concerned about where their parents are. They're not concerned whether their parents are coming back. They just know that's going to happen. And so I thought about Matthew chapter 6, during the middle, in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus in verse 25, he talks about worry. And he talks about, tells us not to worry about our life, what we will eat and what we will drink. He goes into the birds of the air. He talks about the the flowers of the field. They don't worry about what they're going to eat. The flowers of the field don't worry about what they're going to wear or how they're going to look. The Lord just takes care of that for them. And then he goes into telling us that, no, are we not more important than the birds of the air and the flowers of the field? And we don't need to worry about anything that we have going on in our lives either. Paul gives us a little bit more practical advice and following up with what Jesus is saying in in Philippians chapter 4. And what Paul encourages us to do is, as Logan read, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good, report. If there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on those things. So as we're focusing on our lives, as we're 
going through our routine and our daily routine, the way that we can make sure that we're not focusing too much on the worry and the, the stress of life, we can do what Paul says. We can focus on the things that are praiseworthy. We can focus on the things that are true, that are noble, and that are pure. Those things we need to meditate on. Then Paul continues on down in, um, down in verse 11 as he's writing, and he says, Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. Paul had learned to be full. He had learned to be hungry. He had learned that whenever, in whatever state that he found himself, to be content, to know that the Lord was going to take care of his every need. Then on down in verse 13, um, Paul writes, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Three things for us to think about as, as we're considering our, the invitation of Jesus Christ here in just a few minutes. As you think about your life, as you think about whether you've obeyed the gospel or not, if you haven't obeyed the gospel, tonight would be a perfect night to do that, to, to be baptized, to confess your sins, to confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Or if you've been going through life and, and you can't speak as Paul has spoken, if you can't say that I've learned to be content, if you find yourself caught up in worry, if you find yourself caught up in the stresses of life, we are here to pray for you. We are here to help you. We are here for you to lean on, lean a, sh a shoulder to lean on. And then finally, what Paul says is, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We have that same confidence through the word, through Jesus Christ, through, the, through, the, through God's word. We can do all things no matter what we're facing this week. So to, tonight, I offer the invitation of Jesus Christ, whatever your need may be, if you would come forward as we stand and sing. Have thine affections been nailed to the cross? Is thy heart right with love? Just around all things for Jesus but lost. Is thy heart right with God? Is thy heart right with God? Washed in the crimson blood, Lift and made holy, Mary Bauckham has come forward and asked for prayers. In just a minute, I'm going to ask Clint Opperman if he would come lead us in a prayer on Mary's behalf. But she just has a lot of, lot of stresses and a lot of things going on in her life that she would like for us to remember her in our prayers as we're going throughout the league. So, Clint, if you would come lead us in her prayer. Let's go to our Father in prayer. Our God and our Father in heaven, we thank you for blessing us with this time that we could sing praises to you. We're thankful for the opportunity that we had to hear a portion of your word. And at this time, we're especially mindful of, of Sister Mary as she's come forward to Confess that she has many stresses and strains in her life that she would like you to relieve her of, that she yearns to, for us as her brothers and sisters in Christ to wrap our arms around her and to show her love and affection. 
to show her an example of how to lean on you and trust you for, for support, to lean on your word to guide her activities. We pray that you forgive her of the sins that she may have found herself trapped in. We pray that you give her a heart of repentance. We pray that she always lean upon you and and upon us to, to help her in her walk of life. We pray that you provide the way of escape that she may need to live her life faithfully for you. We love her example. We love her sweet smile. We love the fact that she trusts us enough and trusts you enough that she would make this bold step forward in repentance and, and reach out for you and, and we, we, lift, we lift her up to you. Thank you for our dear sister, in Jesus' name, amen. I take this time uh, to take the opportunity for anyone who has not been able to partake of the Lord's Supper. Uh, after the prayers, if you will raise your hand, uh, the men in the back will come forward and serve you. The Lord's Supper is a command. It's a memorial. I was talking with co-workers this week. Uh, I believe a few years ago there was a man hanging Christmas lights in Thompson Station that fell from a ladder and passed away because of the fall. And every year, his surviving family now hangs lights in his honor. We sang today about how we will be a friend to Jesus. Before, as I was preparing for this, I couldn't help but think about Acts chapter 1 and verse 9 where Jesus' friends watched him leave them. And it's all they knew for the previous years. And they needed him so much. And he, as he ascended, I'm sure it was difficult to think, what do we do next? And I'm so thankful for, and I'm sure that Jesus' friends were thankful for the Lord's Supper that he commanded to do in remembrance of him. So just like that family that hangs Christmas lights for their, uh, for their deceased father, who uh, we also, as friends of Jesus, have this opportunity to remember him, but we have the opportunity every week to remind ourselves that we're friends of his and that we want to stand up for him and live for him every day of the week. Uh, we are going to say a prayer for the bread. Will you pray with me, please? And if you need to partake, raise your hand. Lord, we love you. And I pray that we can take this time to remember that we have committed to a life of being close to you, a life of calling you our Lord and our Savior, and as we sang again today, your friend. I pray that as we partake of this bread, that we can remember you, remember our Savior, and use this time to remember the sacrifice that you gave so that we could live with you forever. And it's in your son's name we pray, amen. Pray for the cup, please. Lord, we are so thankful for you. A perfect God sending his perfect son. And we are so thankful that his blood, our Savior's blood, Jesus, cleanses us. And I pray that as we drink this juice, that we use it as a time of 
a memorial of somebody that we're close to and somebody that we're growing closer and closer to. And we are so grateful for his blood that cleanses us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We now take this time as an opportunity to give as well. If you didn't have the opportunity this morning, there's many ways to give. And um, we are richly blessed in many ways. And uh, we are so thankful for this congregation and all the good work that we do here at Southern Hills. If you need to give, please raise your hand and the men will come and serve you. Lord, we love you. Lord, I pray that we are continuing to grow in our gratitude and our understanding of how blessed we are. I pray that we can give generously and uh, be more benevolent in giving with the things that you have blessed us with. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. It's been good to see you all tonight, to sing with you, and to worship with you. We hope that everyone can come back Wednesday night at 7 p.m. for a midweek Bible study, and the next Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for a morning worship service. We'll close tonight by singing one verse of number 111, and then we'll be dismissed in prayer. Let's stand for the song and the prayer. Come we close in prayer. Father, we come before you again in this hour of worship where we've been singing songs of praise to you, reading scriptures, offering prayers, Lord. We thank you for this time that we have. We thank you for this place that we have where we can come and offer these acts of worship to you. Other Christians, Lord, who understand and know and, and believe in, in your power and all that you offer, Lord. We pray that everything that we've done here this evening has been acceptable to you, Lord. Father, we thank you for Sister Mary. We thank you that she came forward tonight, Lord, and she expressed what is on the hearts of so many of us. And we pray that we could offer her the support that she needs. We pray that you would give her the strength that she's asking for. And for all those of us who, who share the same concerns that she does, Lord, please give us that strength. Father, we pray for those on our sick list, all of them who need your healing hand. We pray for those who are attending to them, both doctors and family members and all those who care for them. We pray that you would give those who are suffering strength and, and give those who are taking care of them uh, strength as well, drawing from you, Lord. Father, most of all, we're thankful for Jesus. We're thankful for his coming to this earth, the life that he lived, the example that he gave for us, and the giving of, of his perfect life as the perfect sacrifice for us so that we could have redemption through him. As we go into this week, Lord, we pray that you would watch over us, and that you would give us the strength we need, give us the safety that we, we ask for so that we could come back here and worship you again at the next appointed time. And we ask this prayer in all things in Jesus' name. Amen.